Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome to today's webinar focused on data analysis in, the, in decision making. This is Gemma from Johan Cruyff Institute, your host for today's session. It's a pleasure to engage with such a diverse audience. Today, we have friends connected from 73 different countries. So thank you very much indeed for being here. Just a few items before we get started. If you have any technical issues, we will be happy to assist you through the chat tab located on the right side of the screen. We encourage everyone to make questions anytime during the presentation. We love interaction, so please uh, participate on the debate writing in the questions tab. You can also see on the right side of your screen, and I will address them to Oliver Sates, our guest speaker today. Oliver is currently the head of sports data science and analytics at Club Atletico Paranaense. And as many of you already know, one of our professors in the Master in Football Business in partnership with Football Club Barcelona. Hi, Oliver. Very nice to speak with you again. Hi, Gemma. Uh, my pleasure. Great to be here. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, I hope this will be a very good session for all involved. Okay. So, uh, Oliver, looking forward to hear you uh, whenever you want. The floor is yours. Okay. All right. So, hi, guys. Uh, hello. Uh, and uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, thanks for being here. It's, I'm, I'm quite uh, impressed that we have such a diverse audience, as Gemma mentioned, uh, which I think just highlights uh, the importance of this issue. I think it's, uh, it's one, a movement, uh, uh, this data in football, it's a movement that has been going on at uh, a gaining speed since perhaps five years now, uh, five, six years. Uh, and this diversity, uh, this interest from, from all over the world uh, just just uh, shows us uh, that it's, it's ever uh, increasing. Uh, the importance, I think it's, uh, it's an area that will grow a lot in the future for those that are in the business already uh, i'm sure you're aware that things will change dramatically in five years time perhaps uh, for those that are entering the business uh, i think this this is a, a, a great time to, to start to get involved to learn about it a little bit and perhaps then uh, get yourself into the business and then develop from that so uh just so you know, this is uh, the the theme. It's, it's, it's very uh, complex. Um, you need a lot, a lot of time to discuss it uh, properly. So what we do, uh, it's it's a it's an introduction, uh, and perhaps in the future, uh, in the near future, we we will have the tools to 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 expand this uh, into other opportunities to to uh, increase the knowledge of all involved. Okay, so just a little bit about uh, where I'm coming from. Uh, so my, my background uh, is I, I have a PhD in football business from the University of Liverpool, uh, one of the one of the most prestigious uh, uh, schools of, in, of football business. Certainly, uh, one of the first. Uh, they started this uh, on the late nineties, studying football. Uh, and I think uh, England is at this time uh, and US in some sense uh, the the uh, Germany as well uh, the place to go for understanding uh, football really how football the, the, the football works uh, I, I'll, I'll combine this with just a little bit on, on my career just so you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, so I did a PhD in football business at the University of Liverpool. I went to work for a, a club in Brazil as head of marketing. I stayed there for two, two and a half years. Uh, and then I, 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 we, we generated uh, quite a lot of money at the time. Uh, but then I realized that this money, uh, I, I couldn't understand what was happening with the money because money was we were basically doubling the salaries of the same players. Uh, we doubled the money, uh, and then we were doubling the salary of the same players. So I, I, I thought to myself, this is pointless. Uh, uh, I'm just making other people very, very rich, uh, and we're not gaining uh, any performance at all. So I, 
I need to understand what's going on. I, I couldn't understand at that point what was the bridge between uh, generating money and and generating performance. So this is something that kept on my mind. Left the club, went to work for a French multinational company. Uh, and then I was invited to, to teach uh, in London uh, at UCFP, which is a partner in university. That's a partner uh, with the FA. Uh, so I stayed there, and then in 2015, that's where uh, my mind really opened about uh, about data analytics in football. It, it was the time that uh, it was process was speaking up. Um, it was a few years later after uh, John Henry bought uh, Liverpool, which I, I do think is one of the, of, of the a very clear benchmarks. Uh, so. I got immersed into that uh, for from one year in London. Then I moved. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, to move to to, to Barcelona, uh, and in Barcelona, uh, I went to work for the Craft Institute uh, to help to set up the masters in football business with with FC Barcelona. And then in Barcelona, I I went to do a post grad at Eslade Business School, which is one of the top. Um, business schools uh, in the world because uh, I needed to understand money as well. I, I, I didn't understand money. Uh, <laughs> I still don't. But uh, I wanted to understand a little bit more. Um, so then I, I did a, a postgrad in, in corporate finance. Uh, it was very good to understand um, balance sheets and, and, and cash flow and everything else. Um, and then uh, uh, to, be, to really uh, understand uh, football uh, Connection between football and numbers. I, I I did a postgrad in one uh, in, in they call it the university that I would recommend you all if you want to really go into data, not necessarily data in football, but data as a whole. It was from MIT, so it, it was a great uh, a great opportunity to 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 get to to, to learn uh, some very new concepts. Uh, uh, really also helped to open my mind uh, in terms of understanding uh, data. Uh, and data analysis. Uh, so this is kind of my, my my academic background, very quick. And today I'm uh, I'm, I'm ch actually changing uh, uh, roles. Uh, I used to be the head of data science uh, and analytics of, uh, at Club Atlético Paranaense here in Brazil. Uh, we're switching uh, the the whole structure of the club at, at this point, and and I'm moving uh, just from from being the head of data where where, where any the data science area, which was wasn't really an area, it was, it was me and another guy, uh, and we're moving uh, to 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 become data analysts for the first team only, uh, dedicated our work to the first team. So, uh, which was kind of what we are were already doing. So this is uh, so uh, I'll be a data analyst, data science for for the first team. Uh, uh, for, and just so you know, for for confidentiality issues, I won't be speaking anything about the work I do at Atlético Paranaense because uh, this, this is very, uh, uh, well, you're always trying to gain some edge. Uh, so the work uh, that we're doing there is obviously a bit confidential. Uh, but I'll, I'll discuss the uh, concept. Uh, again, it's an introduction today. Uh, and also, I work with the Crown Institute. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a teacher at a lecture at, at the Masters in Football Business, and, but also um, a lecturer in a few postgrad courses that, that the, the institute has online. So, I, I, if, you, if you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend you doing so. It's a great, great, great institution. Uh, so, yeah, that's enough about me. Uh, and I think the idea of discussing uh, data in football, in order to understand this, is, is uh, it's important to understand uh, what's what's the idea behind it, uh, behind it in football. And so I, I I really really like a quote uh, from 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 this this man, uh, Bill Gates, uh, which he he says I, I I've been struck again and again by how important measurement is to improving the human condition. And this is uh, uh, this is really is uh, I think from 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 my perspective uh, sums up the whole idea of data analysis. What you're trying to do, you, you you're trying to measure things and 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 then understanding with by measuring you can understand try to visualize patterns 
uh, and have insights, and then by then, then you can move in making decisions. Uh, and this, I think, it's one of the most fundamental changes that we had in the human society. Uh, it started back in the 1500s, uh, really, really slow, but uh, after the Enlightenment, uh, late 1700s, in the 1800s, really, uh, it's a process that shaped uh, humanity uh, to the point that we are today. Uh, and in a sense, uh, because of back before, people uh, really didn't measure uh, much. So all decisions was was uh, all the decisions were, were a bit uh, uh, you know more magic than, than there was no not much science it was much more magic uh, and because of that uh, the decisions he, he, that you made uh, didn't have a lot of efficiency so by the time of humanity uh, and then you you go back to the work of great 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 influential mathematicians back in like 15 16 1700s uh, the work they did really, really uh, helped us to improve it because if you, if you see that the, the, the human conditions, uh, the improvements of human conditions since, since the 1700s is ridiculous. Uh, uh, we are living now in a much, 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 much better spite sometimes. We think it's not a much better world. It's oh, so much better than it used to be, apparently, it used to be in the 1700s. Uh, and this much of this has to do with the fact that we were measuring, we started measuring things, and then make decisions uh, based on the insights that we had from measuring and analyzing things. Uh, and this really is uh, the principle of, of data analysis, uh, of data science. Uh, uh, you 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 measure something, uh, you analyze it, and then you make the decision. This is the, the most simple process. Uh, in, in, in data analysis is this, right? So you, you just measure something that's happening, uh, an event or whatever, uh, what's, whatever you want, you can measure. Uh, and then you analyze what the numbers are telling you. And then uh, that you make decisions to improve whatever, to achieve whatever goal you, 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 you want to have. So this is what humanity did in the 1700s. And this is slowly what's starting to happen uh, with what's starting, no, we're already, I think, uh, in some countries, we're already very advanced in this, uh, but in some other countries, uh, Latin America, uh, well, or anywhere in the world outside uh, the, the big five leagues in Europe, um, uh, and the top club in the world, uh, uh, this is slowly it's what's starting to happen, starting to measure football, we start to analyze what's going on, in football matches and whatever other areas that you have and then you start to make decisions based on what you're measuring and what you're analyzing what patterns you're seeing the trends you're seeing uh, so uh, really this is i think uh is the essence in in uh the idea of of data analysis in football of course it's 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 not easy right? uh it's 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 very very uh, uh, complex, uh, and because we're we're on the early well, uh, you know five years and depending on the one year, uh, very very early stages, you do have uh, cultural change, you know, right? You have to change culture. People uh, uh, have to. Uh, I, I don't like the, the idea that you have to believe in data because technically uh, it doesn't make sense. But really, it's about uh, believing in the in the in the philosophy. I can not a philosophy particularly, but still uh, something that uh, uh, you have to implement. Uh, people have to be open uh, to to the numbers uh, because if you build uh, if you build a knowledge in football, if you if you've been working with football for fifty years and never seen data before, and never really paid attention to data, never really focused on data, and then you actually won stuff. You 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 you, you became uh, the best club in the world without data. It's very hard to make this transition to think now oh, you know now now I need data. Well, personally, you can, you can think it's it's a, it's a bit difficult. Um, so, so there's a lot of cultural change. So this is a process. It's one of the most difficult parts uh, in implementing a data analysis. Uh, uh, 
area or creating an area in the club or implementing the data analysis in the club is the cultural change. Uh, oops, sorry. I, well, uh, there was a bit. Uh, lost your, are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, Gemma, are we good? I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. It's okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, just this the, the change, cultural change to, to use data to make decisions in football is very difficult because you, some, you have a lot of clubs, a lot of people that have not been uh, used to make those decisions uh, in data. So you have to change that. Uh, it's, it's difficult, it's not easy. And uh, uh, that's, for example, uh, there was a quote from, from Mourinho, uh, uh, very famously said, uh, people who don't understand football, they analyze it with statistics. So th this kind of uh, tells it all about the difficult comes uh, Mourinho, you know, he won everything, uh, became one of the world top managers without uh, necessarily uh, focusing data in the match. Right? Or, or analyzing players with numbers. So he had a whole other uh, perspective on the players. So, so he, once you see data, you, may, you know what? Perhaps this is not, not uh, ideal. And it's not necessarily wrong. Uh, this is important. It's not because you have data that you, you, you have better, not because you have a few numbers, uh, you have uh, better insights than one guy that has been working for 50 years, much the opposite. Uh, because uh, uh, we will discuss this a bit, but uh, it was so complex, it's such a complex sport, and there's so much numbers. So, so you have, oh, uh, again, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to, to make bad decisions with numbers. <laughs> Once you have the data, it's easy to make bad decisions if you do not have the, 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 the critical uh, thinking, the proper analysis, because if it's such a complex sport, football is such a complex event, uh, that if you do not have this uh, 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 capacity to understand that data may not be telling you exactly what, what, what it is, uh, you could make bad decisions based on data. Right? So it's very important so to combine, uh, and this is really, uh, the essence of, of the data analysis. You want to combine uh, uh, knowledge in football that has already been uh, built for hundreds or 100, 150 years uh, with the knowledge that you are generating now. Right? So it's a combination of things. So it's not one thing is better than another. It's a combination you have to make sure you can combine uh, things because you have very, very, uh, I, I still think uh, data knowledge is it's small compared to this a huge amount of knowledge that has been generated over and over in football. Uh, so Mourinho said that, and uh, uh, Charles Barkley says, uh, I've always believed analytics was crap. Uh, all these guys who run these organizations who talk about analytics, they have one thing in common. They, are a bunch of guys who ain't never played a game, never got girls into high school, and they just want to get in the game. Uh, so, yeah, uh, again, uh, uh, it's important. This, you know, it's Charles Barkley. He was on, on TV saying this. Uh, and uh, he was actually referring this to uh, a bit of spat he was having with the Human Rockets, which is one of the data. Uh, data-driven organizations and sports in the world. So that just to have uh, an important uh, understanding that you have kind of this two, com uh, com uh, the, this two uh, 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 worlds that not always uh, uh, talk to each other. So if you want to work with a, in a club, you're part of your job, a big part of your job is actually make sure that both uh, worlds uh, are talking. Uh, that both worlds uh, are, 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 are in the same table, making the best decisions, right? Uh, and this, uh, the problems with this perspective from Charles Barkley and Maureen is that, uh, however, is, is, is that once, if you don't really rely on data, you will rely on your instinct, in your, in your head, 
uh, in your mind. And and uh, this problem is that I would recommend one book for you if you if you if you if you can uh, read it. Uh, it's fast uh, fast and slow uh, by Daniel Kahneman. Uh, which talks about a little bit about how how the, the, the how to, how we think, how how your our, our mind works uh, uh, in in understanding statistics. Uh, so and on this book particularly, the, this problem. Uh, if this was a live event, I would actually ask you the problem, but uh, because it's not, I will just give you the answer as well, uh, so you can practice with someone. You, you can just start start this. Uh, it's the bet and ball problem. Uh, it's very famous in, in uh, 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 cognitive sciences. Uh, so it's because it measures uh, the, the, the tendency that we have on how we, we think. It's a uh, bet and a ball. They cost one dollar ten cents in total. The ball, the bet costs one dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Uh, usually, and I have done this a uh, 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 challenge uh, live. And I've seen that people tend, uh, and I myself, when I first that I had this tendency to, to think, uh, you say, well, well, easy, bet one one dollar uh, ball ten cents. Um, however, uh, the and the real answer is, is that the two so 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 the, the problem makes sense is that bet is one 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 zero five and the ball is, is five cents, and then you have the difference of of one 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 dollar, but it has. Been, this test has been uh, applied many, 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 many uh, different scenarios with a lot of people, and that's of sixty percent of them. Of the people, uh, they, they answer with bet one dollar and, and ball ten cents, which is the wrong answer. But it's the fast answer is the quick answer because our mind, when we're because the, the, the problem seems very easy at first, and because and because of that, because we're seeing easy, uh, we think it's easy. We don't have, we don't really analyze it through. We don't put it uh, 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 on paper, all right? You just make uh, an answer like this, and this is our instinct uh, talking because we're giving an easy answer to what we believe to be an easy problem. And uh, thing is that. The instinct, uh, is, and this problem really shows that uh, the instinct is not not always always right. And in football, because of the way the football game uh, has developed, uh, the way that it's played, uh, it's a lot about instinct, uh, a lot about instinctive uh, decision making. Uh, instinct decision making usually fast, uh, unconscious, automatic. However, it's biased. Uh, uh, you apply it to, to daily decisions, but they are error prone. Uh, and if you think about the game of football itself, if you're a player and you're playing football, you you have to rely on instinct. Uh, you cannot make a rational decision in the game because rational decisions are slow, they're conscious, effortful, uh, unbiased, of complex decisions. But our most trustworthy. But if you're playing the game, you, you don't have time. So you know you hold the ball, think mm, maybe should I pass the ball here, or maybe should I uh, perhaps you know, by the time you, you you spend one second, two seconds, you you don't have the ball anymore. You're already on the on the ground. Uh, so you have to be fast, right? Uh, and the best, the better players are, are, are in some sense are, are the players that make the better decisions uh, very quickly. Right, and so this is the culture of football, the game itself, and then you go to the to the other uh, stages, right? The manager and 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 director and everyone else involved. You are built in this this, this quick decision making, and right? you are not used to to stop and say, "No, wait, uh, is this true? Uh, should I make this decision? Uh, uh, what are the information that I have available? Are this information?" Uh, uh, Reliable uh, uh, should trust this information. Uh, the insights are my insights uh, uh, right or not? So, uh, and there are a lot of decision making in football outside of the pitch uh, when when you're working a football department uh, that are very complex. Uh, they and they require a lot and a lot and a lot of thinking, a lot of time, a lot of analysts. Uh, analysis, a, a lot of data, new data you have to find somewhere uh, 
and it's very can be very complicated, but it's not within the culture uh, because that's not the way the game play is played. So you have, you do have this really two different uh, 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 environments. One is that you, one is the fast decision, and the other is the slow decision making. So again, the work of of a data analyst or, or trying to build a data analysis culture, you have to make sure that you can combine both. And because if you just focus, you know, you know what, uh, everything should be rational. It's not necessarily true. Right? There is a lot of instinctive decisions that are very, very, very good and very, very important. But this again uh, is the is, is the just the 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 big difference that we have between these two uh, way that two ways uh, of, of 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 that we think and and. This uh, in football, uh, there's a very, very clear difference here. Uh, I, uh, it's a very, very data analysis in football can be very complex. Uh, so uh, it's just important to, to understand that you have these two different uh, worlds, right? Uh, uh, Oliver. Gemma. Yes, related to uh, what you are telling us now, uh, we have the first question coming. Uh, so, uh, Abhishek is saying that uh, can we say it nowadays coaches need to focus on the combination of the psychology part of the game and the data as well? For example, he says uh, Liverpool had hired a Harvard PhD to lead its data analysis team. Do you think it's necessary? Uh -huh relation between psychology, the psychology part of the game and the data? Uh, thanks, Gemma. Uh, very good question. Uh, and <laughs> it's one of the issues. Uh, in, in, in football, uh, you're dealing essentially with human beings producing a certain event. It's different from working in, a, in an industry, in a factory, for example, where you have machines where you can program and they, do, they will do that repeatedly. Uh, uh, in, in, in football, you're trying to understand humans, uh, and humans are, uh, are very complex, and they are not all, I'm certainly not uh, the same every day. Uh, and you have this fluctuation. So, uh, for example, you, there's so much information that you need to have in a player uh, in order to make a, a if you're thinking of, about a data uh, perspective, there's always something missing. Because you won't be able to have all the information. It's impossible to have all the information you can have on a human being uh, to make a rational decision. So uh, uh, you try to extract as, mo as much as you can. Uh, you try to understand the human being as much as you can. The patterns are not always the same. The sampling is also, is also a problem. But again, uh, but you have to understand that whenever you're doing this analysis, uh, uh, player analysis, or, or, or understanding the human being, uh, you, even though you have a lot of data, you might, and you're probably uh, not 100% uh, right. You, there's a large, uh, 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 you, you, you are trying to get 60% right, or 70% right, perhaps. Uh, uh, but there's a lot that you won't know. Uh, there are a lot of answers that you won't be able to answer. And on plus, but if you, if you think from the distinctive perspective, there's a lot of information that we get which are not structured information, not data, uh, 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 not data information, uh, uh, well, not structured quantitative data information uh, that are very, very important to understand human beings. So, so uh, uh, there's a lot of information, a uh, lot of uh, how to say it. Uh, there's a lot of information that the human, the, the professional, for a say, manager can extract from a player that data cannot extract. So uh, there's again important. This information must be combined because sometimes you have uh, uh, issues about behavior, for example, of so many, so many others, uh, which you need to be able to combine both informations uh, to 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 make to, to make better. Decisions. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll go on further into this later on the presentation. Okay, I'll talk a little bit more later. Uh, so, uh, the essence of the idea again is measure and analyze data that you have to generate insights that will improve decision making. This 
this is really about uh, what what uh, data analysis is about. Uh, but the problem is one of the problems that decision making for book can also vary a lot, uh, depending on the on the on who who are you talking to. Uh, for example, if you're talking to the club CEO, if the club CEO uh, is using data to make this, the decision making of a club CEO is different from the football director, which is different from the manager, which is different from the players, which is different from the football staff. And this uh, uh, are the level of people that normally you would uh, talk to, you, you would provide insight for this to help the decision making of this. Uh, professional. So club CEO obviously you have a lot of financial information you want to combine uh, that with performance and, and then measure the performance. Is the team performance uh, performing as it should have been performance with the budget that we have? Uh, is it overperforming, underperforming? Uh, what should be my investments? Uh, where should I, 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 uh, I put my money in order to improve performance at lower cost? How can I do that? Uh, this is really a uh, Ideally, uh, what the club CEO would be thinking, and then you have for this decision making, you have one one type of work. You need to combine a lot of performance parameters with financial parameters, and 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 help that uh, for the decision making. Uh, for a football director, uh, usually they will have also a, a focus in finance, but not so much. Uh, they would try to control the costs, but but also but focus on the long term plan from from squad. So, uh, what? Are, who are the players that I have in mind uh, available? What are my academy players? Who is who's getting old? Who should be sold to each market? Uh, this player he fits this particular market. This player fits that other particular market. Uh, are we are we generating the players that? Uh, well, this can be a CEO uh, question as well. But uh, are we generating the players that are, are are fit to play in the markets that pay more uh, transfers uh, transfer fees? Or, or not? Uh, what what are the demands of of these markets? How can we uh, uh, apply those demands to to our particular uh, development of players? If the focus is on on selling players, uh, what's 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 the 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 the, the uh, line of succession of the players? If this player will is he probably going to leave? Is this going to stay? So this is kind of uh, the decisions that a football director uh, is going to make. Uh, for the manager, however, manager is really short-term thinking. Uh, so he's thinking about the next match, the next three matches, uh, who are, who, how are we playing, uh, uh, who, how can I play better uh, with the players that I have uh, and my current team, uh, how is the opposition, how does the opposition play, uh, what, what what are the insights that I have? And, and then for this, you, you have match data, you have team data, you have player data, you have outside data. There's a lot of information that you, you, you can use to, to improve, to help, to improve the decision making of a manager, of a coach, which I think uh, it's, uh, depending on the level of the club, uh, the, the, the more, the bigger the club, uh, usually, more important is the decision making of the manager because you're thinking more short term uh, and you're trying to extract as much value as you can from from the resources that you have you're not thinking about who's going to be transferred from you you're not thinking about this your succession etc you're thinking about uh winning the next match and so how can i win the next match i think that, this is uh, the, the most challenging question uh, in data analysis. How can I win the next match? And, and then uh, it's, 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 uh, I'll, I'll talk later about this. Uh, players, uh, how, the, uh, how the players are playing? Uh, are they playing the way they should have been, should be playing? Uh, how, do, how are they comparing to the, to the average of the season? How are they comparing with the past performance? Of this particular player, uh, what was the trend performance for this particular player? Uh, what is there any uh, particular uh, issue that it, you can see that on the player development that he should work more, she, he or she should work work more, uh, focus more in developing? Uh, if if the benchmarking for this player is uh, one other particular player, etc. And then football stuff, and for the football stuff, it's, it's more like uh, there's a lot of academy work. Uh, are we is the 
uh, academy, but it's very hard because it's very, very little data uh, uh, in academy. Uh, what all, most of the data in, in football is, is, is focused on professional uh, football from the from the richest market. So if you if you're going for academy, it's a bit more difficult. It's a lot of internal work that you have to do. Uh, but um, are we? If if you really go into the data, the, uh, the structure of the club is each professional uh, member of the club uh, of the staff are they acquiring? Uh, the, the, the data that they need to be acquiring from that particular player or for, from whatever they're producing, uh, for physios, uh, it's, well, physios, it's a lot of data work. Are they applying uh, the, the, the data, uh, the, the, the proper data and uh, 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 structure uh, for making decisions to, to, I don't know, to, to make a spe specific treatment of the player, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So and this information is also valuable for the football player. It's, it's very, very, very complex. Uh, if we were to, work, we were to talk about all the, the, all the issues that involve data in a football department here, uh, we a long, long time here. But really, uh, uh, just sum up, this, those are kind of the decision makings that, that you're trying to help. Uh, and, and just to illustrate a little bit better, uh, usually a football started uh, in, in terms of history, uh, you really for it to had a manager, and the manager knew it all, he did it all, uh, it was only his eyes. And if you go to lower level football, amateur football, this is what happens, still happens. It's the manager who, who knows everything, he, he, he analyzes, he makes the decision, etc. At one point, uh, the Clubs started in the 70s. Uh, clubs started to have video analysis, uh, so people filming uh, uh, the match, analyzing with more time, uh, better view, better perspective, uh, more structured uh, analysis of, of a match of games, etc. And then uh, again, from five, six, seven years now, you 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 have the the data analyst. Who, who's helping the decision making of the manager, but also a lot of works to help um, the, the, to combine your, the data perspective with the video perspective. There's a lot of that also going on because uh, there's a lot of questions that a manager needs to answer that a data itself cannot answer. You need the qualitative analysis. Uh, you need to have someone uh, putting everything in context. And often you will have things that you as a data analyst, uh, you haven't uh, really caught from uh, one particular team on one particular player, and that uh, the, the the video analyst uh, uh, will have as it's more often than not, really. Uh, and then you have as data analyst, depending on the club and the structure, you also combine all, all the data, uh, nutritional data, physical data, medical reports, everything, everything, all the information that you can have on the player. You start to combine in and in one single space then to make sure that all this data you can build the correlations between this data to help you uh, with again whatever decision making you're doing. Uh, one, one way to to to, to uh, illustrate uh, this point is uh, I think perhaps baseball money I'm sure you heard of money ball if you haven't uh, Watch the movie, but more importantly, read the book. Uh, John Lewis' uh, uh, book on 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 John Lewis. Michael Lewis' uh, uh, book on 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 how the Oakland A's uh, use data to help them uh, improve performance in the late nineties, early two thousands. Uh, this became a thing. Um, the movie got rapid and went uh, was nominated for an Oscar. Uh, and then Houston uh, Astros uh, infamously uh, lost the Major League uh, Baseball uh, trophy because I'm, I'm, I don't know if they lost it or not, but they had a problem with some regulation that they wrote in, in accounting. Or I, I couldn't really understand it. But again, uh, then again, I'm just using it then as an example here. This is a play. It's called uh, the Switch uh, from Houston Astros. Uh, they had this this player uh, on on bat. It's called Gallo. Uh, uh, he went to the bat. They knew Houston knew that he couldn't hit to the left. So so 
that against that particular pitch, that kind of particular pitcher, he was always going to hit to the right. Uh, so they just made a play that they got. they said, you know what, why do we need to have people all over the pitch if the, we know that this guy's going to hit uh, to the right? So uh, let's put everyone there. So the, all the outfield players, all the defensive players, they are all uh, on the right uh, half of the of the. I'm probably saying all the wrong words here for baseball, but they are all on the right half of the of the of the baseball pitch, uh, and j j just left one guy on the left. That's the red square there. Uh, just, you know, just in case, because you know, not, you never have a hundred percent certainty on anything. So just in case, we will put one guy there. But uh, let's wait for him to hit to the right. And uh, the, this uh, is the guy, uh, Gado. Uh, I, if you want to uh, watch, and, and they have this video on, on YouTube. If you want to watch it, uh, uh, just just write uh, Houston Astros switch. Uh, and yeah, uh, he hit on, on that particular play. Uh, he hit to the right, and then again on the, on the same match, they did the same thing. He would hit to the right again. It's just one example of how uh, data can be applied uh, into decision making in sports. Uh, another good example is uh, basketball. At some point, uh, the NBA started to to, to analyze uh, the efficiency of of shots, and they um, discovered that. Uh, mid-range shots uh, were uh, uh, the value of mid-range shots was very low because for each mid-range uh, mid shot that you took you will score under uh, 0.85 points uh, but if you scored uh, if you shot from 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 the three-point line uh, you the, even though even in the worst position of the three-point line you will get at more than one point per shot so why as a cent as as, as uh, if, if you're thinking about efficiency, why would you shot mid-range shots if it's it's less valuable, right? Uh, so that really changed the way then the NBA is played. If you watch basketball in the 90s, you know you watch today, you see that's two different games. Part of the reason is because of this. And there's a shot map 2001, 2002. You see uh, how the, the most uh, the most frequent shots in the NBA, how they were uh, played all over uh, uh, all over the the the, the, the the court uh, and then 2019-2020 you can see really see the difference uh, how it's all focused on on the most valuable areas because that's where the efficiency is uh, and uh, one example also is, is, is Michael Jordan James Harden uh, if you watch uh, Michael Jordan play you know he did a lot of mid range shots uh, if you haven't watched uh, you go and watch the last dance uh, you can see that he does that a lot and then uh, James Harden the top uh, Top score uh, on the NBA uh, doesn't he doesn't shoot uh, from mid range he focuses on on the three range uh, three point uh, or uh, under under the basket which again are the most valuable areas uh, for points and uh, this this exam, uh, uh, gives you an example and you you can start to see this uh, in football start happening in football and it has to do a lot of distance within the goal that the more the, the closer you are to the goal, the higher is the the more valuable is your shot. So you start to see clubs that are, are data driven, shooting a lot from close range. Uh, it's one of the most important uh, 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 changes that data brought to football. You, you you can really see that happening already. Uh, and the NBA even uses that uh, in uh, this is a screenshot from from the video of the training of uh, Timberwolves. And then you can see on the red, uh, there's a red uh, sticker on the on the floor which says 1.0 red, and that's the, the the average point you would get from a shot from that position. And uh, on the video they show the you know, he's sitting on a one, uh, uh, 1 1.10, I think, or 1.15, and it's in green. So they use that even in training to make sure that the players are are are, are used to this idea of making uh, uh, good shots, available shots. Right. So, uh, more measurement, measurement uh, generates more data that generates more insights uh, that improves efficiency of actions taken. Uh, this is what you want, and this sums up uh, what we have been talking. And the question in football, or oh, really, uh, is how can you generate 
uh, win related actions that are conscious, repeatable, and have low financial energetic costs. This is one of the questions that drive uh, uh, my, my uh, at least my work uh, in, in my, myself you know, my, uh, in, in, in data analysis. Um, it's, it's a, and you don't have an answer for that, but it's one thing that you keep in mind. It's like how 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 can I I be, how can I generate things that are more conscious and repeatable and have low financial and energetic costs for because obviously if you from data perspective if you want to win the match you have people running fast at thirty plus kilometer per hour all the time one hundred percent of the time for the ninety minutes uh, you can't have that. it's impossible. So how can you what are the uh, what are the best ways uh, that you with the limitations that you have a uh, human condition and everything uh, to make uh, to, to be more uh, from 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 the actions there that you're making uh, problem with footprints uh, so depending on the on the uh, on the on who says uh, so some people say uh, uh, an actual but also depends on on the league that you're playing or the leagues that have much more actions than, than in the other leagues some leagues will have 1,500 touches per match, and other leagues will have 3,000. Uh, so I'm just using uh, 1,500 here, just in the, as an example. Uh, when you touch the ball, when a player touches the ball, uh, how many decisions can he make? Uh, she, he or she make four decisions. Uh, should I pass this to A, B, C, or should I keep running? Well, that's one way to say. Other players may have 10 decisions. Other really good players may have 20 decisions that they can take from, from each. Should I stop? Should I run? Should I go a little bit slower? A hundred, really an infinite number of, of decisions that you can, you can make once you have the ball. Uh, but let's say four. <laughs> That's a very, very small set of decisions. Uh, if you have four decisions for each touch and you have 1,500 touches in a match, which is low, which is low, low number of touches, uh, what are the number of possible outcomes of in the match, that's four powers of 1,500. And if you go to the calculator, uh, the calculator won't make this calculation, but just say infinity, because the calculator has not, uh, does not have the capacity to calculate this number, because it's, it's this, this particular number is larger than the number of atoms that we have on Earth. Uh, so it's impossible, and uh, um, I'm very, I'm very, uh, 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 Affirmative on this, uh, it's uh, impossible to have uh, to under to to know football uh, to understand what's going to happen in a match uh, in the ninety minutes for sure. You, you have it's it's impossible. You have you no one can have an idea of what will happen exactly in a match in ninety minutes. It's really really impossible uh, because football is very very complex. Right? It's a complex system uh, in which it's impossible. To, to predict the outcome of every single event. You have a distance, you have speed, you have spin on the ball, you have the weather, you have wind, you have pitch conditions, you have players, you have speed of the players. Uh, there's so, so many variables impact uh, on a match, So which you, you, you must understand it's impossible to predict uh, what's going on. And, and one micro change in one specific event will have a profound consequence on the sequence of these events. So, so if one player gives a bad touch uh, or, or just uh, makes the angle a little bit uh, to the left, uh, that little bit to the left in a sequence will have a profound impact uh, on, on what's going on. So, so uh, and this is really chaos theory. So it's one of, you know, one of the main fears about human condition. Uh, human life, you know, uh, one small changes that we have uh, in our life, uh, small decision, micro decisions that we have in our life may may have profound impact in the future. Uh, so every now and then, everyone uh, goes through this, and football is no different. So that's maybe, that's what makes it impossible. But uh, although it's impossible to predict one single match, for example, you kind of can understand. Once you have a large sample of matches, once you have a large sample of data on one player or one team, you can kind of understand the patterns of performance, what the, the player do, what's, what you start to see the repetitions. It's never 100%, but you can, from, from a flip of a coin, from 50%, you can go 55, 60, 65, 70% in order to understand uh, 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 the patterns of performance of the particular player. Right? And then once you have the 
the patterns, uh, you, you, you can understand trends, average, and, and understand the principle uh, and the, the principle in life of regression to the mean. You can see if the player, the team is overperforming, underperforming, uh, and, and which is one of the one of the things that we uh, that impact, has a lot of impact in football. We we tend to think that in football, if something uh, uh, if we're we're playing well, uh, we for three matches uh, we will keep playing well for forever. Right? Uh, or if we're playing bad for five matches, we will keep playing bad forever. Uh, we do not see that as a variation, which sometimes it means if we are playing bad for five matches, but we have the good the good uh, patterns, there's a good chance that we will start to play well in the future because we will go back to the mean. Uh, but because the, mat, the football so uh, if you analyze the match per match, it's short term. Managers are focused in short term. The idea of regression to, me, to the mean is almost useless. You don't want to, uh, uh, it's okay if we lose the next four matches because then we're going to win eight matches. It's very hard to make sense. You won't be able to make this argument in football. So that's uh, kind of one of the complexities of working with data in football. Um, but uh, it can give you uh, an understanding of probabilities, and they always uh, and a probability is a key key word uh, in football because you wanna uh, oh because again you cannot make it 100 percent sure, but you want again you wanna you wanna gain the small percentage of probability to make something a bit more probable, the result your decision a bit uh, more uh, a bit better. It's not a little bit not necessarily the best decision, but you want you wanna just gain. A few percentage points uh, 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 for the probability of winning one particular match. Uh, so, in order to calculate, uh, to understand the data and to calculate the probability, uh, there are uh, five basic, uh, not basic, but five, five, five uh, 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 things that you want to use data for. Uh, the first one is the the, the most important one is the volume. You are understanding the volume of, of whatever is happening on the pitch or whatever is happening in football. So let's focus on, 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 on player uh, scouting. Uh, so if you, you want to know how many, what's the volume of shots or volume of, of passes or volume of touches, dribbles, etc. Uh, it's one way to measure. That if you want to start from scratch analytics, you will start oh, how many times, how many passes uh, does a player get on a match? Uh, and then, once you understand the volume and you have a large sample, you can start calculating the success rate. Right? So, oh, this player, uh, his his passing is ninety percent. Usually, it would be between eighty-five uh, to ninety-five percent. Ninety-five percent is very good. Uh, the the success rate of passes, right? So you want to say, oh, you know, this player he passes uh, ninety percent, right? And, and these are the volume and success rate are are the basic. Uh, uh, data that you have to work in football, and you'll see even, there's even broadcasts of matches. Right? And if you want to work, if you want to implement the work of data analysis in football, this, this is really the first two things that you go. And then start sometimes to make correlation between volume of, of, of passes with volume of touches and volume of shots, etc., or other events, uh, which will start to give you better insight of what's going on. Right? But these two are the, the easiest to have uh, in hand, the easiest to analyze. And then sometimes uh, uh, clubs may say, you know what, I have this, okay, great, this is all you need, uh, but it's not. Uh, uh, because that will just give you a bit an idea, but might give you the wrong uh, insights for decision making. Because volume and success rate, if you do not have context, you have nothing. Right, so players that play uh, more advanced, more uh, for forward, naturally you have uh, 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 let you will pass uh, the ball, usually the the ball less than the defender because the context of defender that he is in a much safer zone. There's less pressure, etc. So, uh, well, depending on the pitch location, depending on the pitch uh, uh, on the players around, and so many other variables. Uh, which gives you the context for that particular volume and that success rate. Uh, without this information, you 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 have nothing. Right? Uh, oh, you you have some insights, but 
not a lot of insights, but we really, and this, this is where it starts to get tricky because you need to understand the context and context varies a lot from manager to manager, from club to club, from, from game model to game model, uh, strategy to strategy. So this is key, understanding context. And this is so difficult in football because there's so many things uh, that, that, that apply to the context of that particular event or that uh, particular data with that particular success rate uh, in a match, right? Uh, so it's really, really important to understand. And then if you understand the context, then you move, and then it's, <laughs> data becomes a lot more advanced and you need to understand value. You have kind of context, you you have the value, you, you the volume, you have the success rate. What's the value of the particular action? Uh, how that helped me to score a goal or, or, or to not uh, have a goal scored against? Uh, how does is that help me on that particular uh, uh, action uh, that I should be making? Right, and this becomes tricky right? so, because a lot of as contexts are different, the value of actions are much much different different uh, uh, in a match or for a player. Uh, players may have good data, very very good data, but once you you you, you start making the value analysis of data, you start. To Perhaps even though this player have very good numbers, uh, the value of these numbers are not very good. So perhaps we should not. This is not the best option for us. So this is where start becoming uh, a bit more advanced. And finally, uh, I think this uh, one of the hardest uh, parts is to understanding the risk. And this is so tricky because if you're if you're dealing with probabilities, you're dealing with risk. And the whole idea of analysis, data analysis, is about risk. Uh, one of the, the industries that use data the most is the insurance industry, because you know, if once you, or, or stock market. Was uh, uh, for us and, uh, and the stock market uh, because it's 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 a lot of you want to understand risk of investment, risk of decisions, etc. And this can become uh, uh, it's very 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 difficult. Right? So uh, how how uh, how do you extract data? Usually, eyes uh, first. Uh, yeah, that's how people do it all the time. Uh, once you, <laughs> you develop a little bit more, you have a notebook. You just write whatever information you're having. You're writing and then combining information. Once, once you 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 evolve, you go for video analysis, maybe a computer, and then start Excel spreadsheet. Uh, once you move that, then you have event data, uh, which uh, it's event data is one of the type. It's the most famous type of data that you have. Uh, in football at this point, as well, so it's what events are happening with the ball, right? You, how many touches, how many passes, how many shots, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, there you have uh, in a match. And then again, it's 2000, I, I mentioned uh, 1,500 before. Here, I mentioning 2,500 because it varies a lot depending on league per league, depending on data provider by data provider. Sometimes cons they consider uh, the events differently, so it's something to, to be aware of. And then a technology that's uh, developing now and which will really change the way we analyze data in football is the tracking data. And this, uh, we can go, if we're just considering uh, bi-dimensional tracking data, we're talking about 5 million data points per match because you know whatever is happening uh, in a 2D perspective with the ball, with all the players, with the 22 players. And that gives you, gives you a much, much, much better uh, idea for context. A lot of event data, uh, it's it's uh, event data is very limited in the sense that you want to add context and value. Uh, tracking data is more useful. It would not be uh, uh, the answer to everything, but surely will help. Uh, helps, or it's already helping a lot of us make better decisions with understanding uh, the actions, all the ball actions, and, and whatever is going on. The uh, problem with, with tracking data is that uh, you usually will have it available uh, It's limited to your club or only to your league. So if you want to use uh, benchmarking or scouting, it's a bit more difficult. Uh, event data, however, depending on the service provider, you can have it from all over the world. Uh, there's a lot uh, of discussion in football, as I mentioned, about the qualitative data and quantitative data. Uh, often used and money ball is all about the conflict between each other, right? The guys with numbers and the guys with, with the experience. Uh, and I, I do think it's 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 not about conflict. Uh, I'm not. I don't think as I'm sure this is, it's not about uh, one is better than the other. It's really about combining both. But understanding qualitative data, it needs to be structured 
qualitative data. It's not because you're, you're seeing with your eyes that you do not have to process the information and make sure you make an input somewhere to be analyzed, to be correlated uh, to something else. Because uh, there's a lot of data, again, that we cannot uh, uh, pick from, 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 from event data or even tracking data that you will need to have. Uh, it will need to be based on the eyes. And then, especially if you go to academy, academy is all about structural qualitative data um, because you do not, uh, most clubs will not have the technology available. It's too expensive uh, to get information on, on players that are 10, 12, uh, 14, 15 years old. So you, for that, but you, you can use uh, 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 structured qualitative data strategies to make better decisions. Uh, you sh and you can and you should do that uh, uh, to make whatever decision you are doing with, with academic players, which are different decisions, completely different decisions from professional players. And then finally, uh, I think uh, in football, uh, important decisions are all about, uh, are, uh, often about random probability. Football is very random, as I mentioned, uh, can be very random. We are talking about 56%, 46% uh, of times the, the, under, the, the, the team that has, uh, is under the table wins a match. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, uh, unpredictability, uh, uh, it's a lot of randomness in football. So, uh, uh, and, and this uh, decisions that randomness have a high impact on the, 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 the events that randomness has, uh, uh, the randomness generates, they have a huge impact on the way the club makes decisions. And it's very important. Data is also a lot of, 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 of a lot of work of data. It's making sure that you can uh, 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 provide context to randomness, right? Uh, it's, it's, uh, yes, it's random, but even though, you know, if we had a 60% win uh, chance of scoring a goal, which was a kind of uh, the chance that a Sterling had, uh, and this, uh, the, 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 the chance was 60, 70% chances of scoring that particular goal. So every 10 times he would miss three or four, so it's okay to miss it. It's not, it's not bad, but that, you know, understand the context. It, it gives you much more a value to that particular action. Um, but uh, because uh, one chance uh, uh, happened, because uh, uh, one event unfolded in an improbable way, which was this shot from Sterling, uh, it was seven percent of scoring, only thirty percent of missing. Uh, it cannot make you change whatever uh, decisions you're having regarding both the players and the team because one particular uh, improbability happened. Right? So data analytics is a lot about making sure that you can understand what's going on, uh, uh, understand the, 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 the result, uh, how, how random was the result, uh, and using that uh this is Bayesian uh, uh uh thinking uh using that uh result that probability that that the probability result of, of a particular match or whatever uh event you know and, and making sure you work better to improve the probability for the future right you cannot use random events to make yes or no binary decisions you, you want to make them uh, 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 contextualize, right? So, and but again, football is a lot of randomness. It's not just because, and for the Manchester City has a marvelous uh, uh, data and analytics structure. It's one of the best in the world. Uh, but it's not because of you have that that it will not be affected by randomness, uh, which because of the complexity that football is, uh, will always have a huge huge role in football, and that's why football is football. That's why football is one of the reasons why football is football, one of the reasons why football is so popular. But certainly the most important reasons why why uh, uh, betting companies like football so much, because it's very, very random. Uh, you can have a lot of randomness being applied, and then the work of data analytics is making sure to understand the impact of randomness and how can you work, gain the, the margins to make things a little bit less random okay so uh thanks uh I, I went four minutes over my time uh but i hope you enjoyed the session uh, again it's an introduction it's a vast team 
uh, you can we can have some discussions about it, and I hope uh, we can have soon. And if you want to contact me further, uh, that's my email. Uh, please uh, send a message, and I'll try to help you with whatever I can. Thanks. Thank you, Oliver. Yes, you are right. A lot of information about data and. Uh, we had uh, quite a few questions during your speech, and uh, I'm going to pass them to you, going through the most rated one to the, the, last, uh, to the last one. Okay. okay. So, for example, uh, Martin Castro, he says, uh, he's right when he says, the synopsis of this webinar started, uh, stated how uh, to turn a modest team into a competitive one with the help of data analytics. So what... Mm -hmm would you recommend to modest teams to prioritize when investing in data analytics? Software? Well, run. yeah, uh, investing in, the good thing is that investing in technology and data analysis is much cheaper than, than investing in tools. Uh, so if you're a modest team, uh, you, what you want to do is, is make sure you, 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 you direct your investment, at least part of your budget to build an infrastructure, a data infrastructure, because you need uh, to have services, uh, uh, you need to have data providers, you need to have uh, people, staff, to be able to analyze data. And then uh, uh, what will happen if you do that, if you have a model thing and you invest in a data analysis department uh, uh, an area, you will be able to, let's, usually you'll be able to scout better players if you have the proper knowledge in place. Uh, by scouting the, best, the better place, you will start overperforming uh, both on the pitch, but also financially, because eventually you will be able to transfer these players and use the funds to finance the club as a well. whole. Oh. Uh, so, uh, um, but it's important to know that a modest team, because uh, it's very important to know that you won't necessarily be champions by doing that. And it will take a lot of time. So it's not, oh, let's do this and next year I'll be champions. It's usually not like that. Some of may happen, but it takes a little time to build the cultures, take a little time to understanding the market, the, the, the players. Uh, so how can a modern, answering the question, how can a modest team uh, do that? You, ha you need to build a team. Uh, there's no guideline uh, to say uh, uh, you, you, how to do it. Uh, but it's important if you have a team to be able to analyze the volume, again, uh, those, those principles, the volume, the success rate, uh, 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 the context, uh, and, and, and the value and the risk of, of whatever you're doing. But this model needs to be built by the club. And there's a lot of testing. There's a lot of, you, it usually will take a two, three years for you to be able to implement a very, very structured uh, data department. Uh, but surely, if if you're not if you're in a league that no one uses that, by doing a little bit, if you're critical with the data, if you understand that not necessarily the insights that they're having are the best insights, you need to be very critical. Uh, once you have that, you will be able to gain some margins and perform a little bit better. But uh, the idea would be uh, invest uh, on data services, invest in technology, invest in people, and make sure. Uh, that whatever is being generated in this area can be uh, uh, passed on uh, to the decision makers. Mm -hmm. um, you said that uh, communication and information is very, it's very important, and I agree with that. Internal communication first, and then uh, to communicate to the fans uh, what's going on with, with the club. So uh, Mo is saying that uh, how do you communicate uh, in a simple way to fans to explain that uh, it might take time to show success? <laughs> uh, I don't think you need to communicate to fans necessarily. I think a lot of data work, uh, uh, you sh I don't think you should be communicating to fans what you're doing, because I think it's a lot of confidential work. The, more, the, the less people know about it, uh, probably the, the, the best advantage you have, because you are, you're trying to get competitive edge, and if you tell people what you're doing, uh, other clubs with higher financial power will just start repeating whatever you're doing. So you want to keep that uh, a little bit secret, at least. Uh, you, and again, because it fails a lot of time, uh, you make uh, bad insights because, again, you need a lot of context. A lot of, uh, it's difficult. Uh, 
you cannot use that as uh, it's, it's very good when it, it works, right? When it works, everyone's like, yeah, the club is a big move. No, it's using data. But it doesn't really talk about when people club loses. Huh? They don't say, oh, we really use a lot of data to make bad decisions. Huh? <laughs> that doesn't happen as always, uh, as often. Uh, but so so I don't, I don't think, uh, I think maybe uh, if you, depending on the context of the club, if you're a more political club, uh, if you want to, please, if, if you want to find ways to generate value, you just briefly communicate that, but you don't really uh, 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 want uh, fans to know in, in depth of what you're doing. Because one of, <laughs> one of the characteristics of data analysis in football, you make football extremely boring, extremely boring. You talk five seconds, that people lose the interest. Uh, so, I wouldn't. I, w I wouldn't really recommend uh, uh, giving that content to players. Uh, defense. Okay, I wouldn't say it's boring. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of people connected right now to your <laughs> <laughs> change. Change your mind. Uh, another question. Talking about money. Um, so, if you have to choose between uh, investing in a specific data uh, analysis software or uh, maybe uh, club management developing their own methods in data analytics. Uh, what would you do? What would you do? That's a, that's a great question, because now uh, as data analysis in football become more, uh, more relevant and more famous, a lot of companies are built, we have a lot of companies today, uh, to provide services, uh, consulting services. Oh, I can know. I can you know. I can tell you who are the best players for you. I can do uh, etc. However, <laughs> these companies they they provide a service to a lot of other clubs. So if you have the same uh, knowledge uh, being used to 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 uh, um, inform all the clubs, you, you really don't have much of the competitive advantage that you want to have by having data. So uh, uh, I would. I wouldn't recommend. Well, if if you're a small club and you're starting, maybe it's a good way to start having someone else's service just to give you some context into whatever sign you're making or etc. But if you're really serious about it, uh, you want to make this internal work uh, because you will build a model that fits the game model. Uh, you will build a set of information that will that will. Uh, 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 be aligned with with uh, what managers, what what the executives, and whatever other players, what they're absorbing, because this again takes time. Uh, so uh, you customize that information. It's very very important because uh, again you, you have two thousand five hundred uh, events in a match. Uh, you can't possibly discuss everything that you can discuss all the correlations with the manager and uh, with with the players. Part of the work is a lot of filtering. What's the most important thing uh, to make quick decisions? Uh, you know, it's a bit uh, contradiction, but but uh, you, if you're talking to managers and players, you won't be able to sit down and discuss uh, uh, the next match for over uh, five hours of discussions, which you could with all the data you have. So this work you do by yourself, and then you translate the most important parts forward. Um, so uh, uh, I think uh, uh, if you can, uh, you should focus on on, on, on developing your own method. Uh, if you can't uh, start, then then start with with some other company. But make sure that you are able to change later, because again, you want to have the competitive edge. Uh, you want to have the competitive advantage, and you're not going to have that by consulting with a company that's selling the same service to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, Miguel uh, says, apart from the um, uh, analysis of the football match itself or the player performance, which department areas can benefit the most out of an investment in data analytics? Uh, I, I, despite uh, outside football, is that a question? Outside the football department, right? inside of the same uh, organization, inside of the club. If you can yeah. uh, use analytics to improve the performance of uh, in other areas of the club, 
all the other areas really. Uh, but financial department, financial department is a data analysis area, right? Uh, in itself, uh, marketing uh, is something that should uh, have more data, especially if you if you if you do a lot of work in social media, then it's it's a lot of of, of data analysis in itself as well. So all, all really all areas of the club can can be used. Uh, but I think it's important to make a distinction with uh, business data analysis and football data analysis. They are two very different areas because uh, you're dealing with two very, very different uh, 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 events, let's say, uh, uh, a sample, especially sampling. Uh, so uh, the, the things that you focus in football, it's not the things that you focus uh, in business. So uh, you, you, uh, my particular view, you, you, you shouldn't mix both. Uh, because you will, uh, it will be diff it will be complicated. So uh, uh, because of language, because of culture, because of demands, etc. Football is very demanding, very very demanding. So uh, yeah, when you're doing work with football department, that's all you can focus because it takes all the time that you have available. Uh, so you should have to do, you should have data analysis for the whole club, but it should be uh, in different areas. Mm -hmm. Um, how can uh, I think that you you already uh, talk about it? But uh, I wanted to to make these questions from Alexander. He says, "How can football academies use data analysis over the course of player development? And can coaches use uh, data analysis uh, to potentially predict which aspects of the game certainly children can master better?" Uh... So for academy players, what I think one of the most useful ways to apply data is to follow up what uh, to understand the journey of the player. Uh, so what how's his progressing? And then once you have a large sample, you can kind of model, model that particular player to one certain trend and understand if the player is performing better or lower or, or worse than he should be at that point in life with that given conditions. Um, and then you make the, the adjustments to, to, to empower his performance to make him sure make sure he can perform better on the pitch and as a human being. Uh, and overall, so it's a lot about that. So about development uh, and making the adjustments for 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 that to to, to maximize the, the potential of the player uh, without obviously harming the player. Uh, really focusing on improving his conditions. Um, so that's that's one one way to do, uh, and and uh, not a lot for 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 matches itself. Not a lot of you know you don't want to focus so much on on on, on should we win and how can we win the next match. You can give a little bit of information, but I, I don't think it's worth because you're, as an academy, the, depending on the philosophy, but usually performance will not be the most uh, important part. Uh, that that, that short-term performance won't be. Uh, the most important part in a player evaluation. So, and also evaluation is a key thing. Make sure you have all the data, all the information combined to make a proper assessment or to understand that particular player. It's not not something that uh, you know. I like this player. I don't like this player. Make sure you have all the all the context in this. Uh, and what was the other question, Gemma? Sorry. Um, let me find it again. Uh, yes, that, that can coaches use. Uh, uh, data an uh, analysis uh, to potentially predict. Uh, no, you already said that. Uh, which aspects of the game certain uh, children can master better? You said. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You you can't again. You can't predict things. You can have an idea. Uh, you can. Well, we can. You can predict. You can predict the probability of things. But uh, so yeah, uh, I think coaches uh, are one of the hard users of data, if if if, if possible. To, to make sure games try to identify uh, weakness in the opposing team, uh, identify big, uh, strengths and weakness on, on your team, on, on the opposing team, and see, simulate uh, uh, on that same conditions if the, the, how the team understand how that particular team played against teams that are similar to yours, etc., etc. I think uh, you can use a lot, a lot of information on that. Sidar uh, says, uh, to what extent is performance and data used for players? Uh, any specific area of data being used or age group for it? Uh, depends on the club, again. Uh, 
I think, and I think, but I, I do think that uh, younger generations are more used uh, to data because they are more used to FIFA, for example. They're most more used to to, uh, to the digital uh, world, uh, which has a lot of data. So they are more that the vocabulary is more uh, easy. It's easier to understand for for younger players than are for older players. Um, so. Uh, so a lot depend again depends on the club. You can make reports for players just to make sure that they understand what their performance is. It's, it's, it's all about uh, uh, you can provide benchmarks for that particular player. You can say you know what you did this very well. You're the best on the league on this, but this you lack in this. So perhaps we can make an adjustment. Just focus on this. You, you you won't be able to, and you shouldn't even try to. Think that you can uh, uh, use a player like a, a, a video game, right? You know, just give directions to the player. You shouldn't think about that. But you, you can uh, provide insights to the players that will help his own critical analysis into developing as a better player. Or you can point out what are the strengths and the weakness for specific training for that particular player. So, really, a lot of things can be used. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, looking at the, the Charles Barkley statement, that you show us in your <laughs> uh, yeah, I wonder if, if players are happy uh, with data analytics. How, how, how do you explain them that it's, it's a trend, that it's growing up uh, and uh, it's a way to, to improve the performance? Uh, depend on the, again, depend on the players, depend on the market, the culture. I think some, some, some cultures are more used to it, the others less. I think that really it also depends on the on players themselves. Uh, from what I I read about, uh, usually the top elite players they are guys that are really focused on their own performance, how to improve. They have uh, competitive uh, uh, competitive uh, philosophy, right? very competitive people. So they want to know they want to perform better all the time. And one way to make and and and, and then they get uh, uh, they use data to 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 put that their performance in context and and see if they're evolving or or, or not. Uh, but again, really depends on the player. Some players we want, some other players we won't want. Uh, depend on the personality. And again, there's no right or wrong. Uh, you can be a fantastic player and not really care about data, and it's okay as long as you're a fantastic player. Uh -huh. uh, Constantine uh, says that, do you think that the role of human skill uh, analysis uh, still is key matters even with the development of arti artificial intelligence? Oh, the humans will always be the most important part, always, always, always. Uh, so it's, it's too complex. Uh, uh, and I, I think eventually artificial intelligence may have a good, uh, a good uh, impact on the game, but uh, it's like thinking that artificial intelligence should tell you what to do with your life. Uh, it shouldn't, uh, and will not, will never predict really uh, what you want to do with your life. Uh, but it would, might be able to help you with some aspects of it, and I think it's the same for the game. Might help you to play to to, to help. It might help you with some aspects, but will never help you with everything. Um, it, it 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 is a human game. Uh, it's a human behavior, and we we cannot predict everything. Uh, it's 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 Pascal's dilemma, right? Uh, if we know everything, we will be able to predict everything. But we don't know everything. We will never know everything. So uh, I I, uh, I I think there's a, a space for that, but not for everything. Mm -hmm. and, and Oliver, if uh, club is, um wants to implement uh, data and uh, analytics in football, um, how many people usually work in a, in the data analytics de department uh, to make it efficient? Yeah, well, really depend on the club. It can be five, it can be one, <laughs> it can be ten, can twenty. There can be one, or do you need? Oh, well. Uh, to start, I think if you have one, it's already something. <laughs> it's better than nothing, certainly. <laughs> uh, but it really depends on the club. But if you want to really, sometimes you can have, uh, if you want to start, you can have people doing uh, some analytics a part of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, but if you want to create a full department, maybe five people, it really depends on what really depends. Mm -hmm. It's hard to answer this question. Okay, another question um, from Marco. He says that if, uh, do you recommend a specific study program or course that will provide the basics foundations regarding how to use the, and implement data analytics in football club? You can you can think about uh, one. I can say from the Schopenhauer Prep Institute that we are offering um, a degree, a certificate, uh, a, a course on data analytics in sport. If it's a uh, five weeks uh, duration and it, it uh, starts in uh, November and it's it's online. Uh, anyway, if you can, uh, yeah, if you can recommend any. Well, certainly the best is, is Christ Institute, uh, but uh, at Statsbomb, they have a few courses on that. I, I think uh, can be a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see if we have missing any other questions about uh, yeah, people talking about uh, Moneyball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the last one. Uh, from what age should a player, a player, not the club, a player, Get serious about data analysis. Uh, it's my view, okay? It's not yeah. necessarily okay. something that, that, that uh, it's, it's true, but I don't think that you should educate players at early, early stages on, on data. I think that can be uh, a bit counterproductive, uh, counterproductive in terms of player development. Uh, so I think by when they start maturing, so I thought, 16, 17, 18 onwards, I think it's better. It's important that they understand the concept of data before, that, uh, but to be start using it uh, more uh, more heavily, I would say uh, 16, 18 uh, on, onwards. I, I personally wouldn't think, I don't think it's very useful if you're too young. I think it, you can actually uh, create a negative impact on the player. Uh, so the, the later, uh, the better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Oliver, uh, one okay. Hour and a half with you <laughs> to about data. So I think we, we've covered all the questions uh, from our audience. Uh, so we can uh, just leave it here. Thanks again for your time. Uh, right. Okay, and take care. And uh, I hope uh, to see you soon at the campus. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, so, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jenna, again for the invitation. Thanks for, for the moderation. Uh, thanks for all the people that sent questions and interact and then watch uh, this webinar. It's a lot of information and not a lot of time. So, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to, answer, to email me and I'll be happy uh, to interact uh, whenever I can. All right. So, have a great day, everyone. Uh, thank you. I hope this was useful and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Oliver. And thanks, everyone, for participating. Uh, just remember that you will soon receive a link to the webinar recording. And uh, we invite you, as always, to stay connected and keep following new webinars. And you can find all the information on our social media channels. So thanks again for your attention and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.